The essence of clearing any MBA exam is practicing by way of mocks. We give previous year IFT, ZAT, SNAP papers in the actual exam format. You can take these tests for free and get detailed analysis. Hi guys, I'm Keshav Shastri from the Cracker family. Welcome all. So we have compiled all the static GK part so that we can re revise important general awareness questions from past one or two years. It is important from IFT, ZAT, SNAP, TIS, everything. We have put up all major awards, Nobel, Oscar awards, culture and arts, business, CEOs, countries and states, ambassadors, lot of stuff. I thought this wouldn't take so much time. It's pretty straightforward, but it took a lot of time. So we have split it up into two or three videos perhaps. So uh, this is the part one of the video. Also uh, remember that the entire PPT, we are putting it in, form, in the form of a blog. It will be in the link in description so that you can read everything, go through everything in one shot. Okay, so let's begin. To begin with Nobel Prize winners, you can at least expect one question in the many exams lined up. So Nobel Prize in Physics this year went to two factions. One is James Peebles, James Peebles for Theoretical Discoveries in Physical Cosmology. This is one faction. The other faction is went to Michael Mayer and Didier Kulos. This is for the discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar type star. So there is a solar type star, something like the sun and uh, an exoplanet is orbiting that. So discovery of that, they discovered it in 1995 and the exoplanet is called as 51 Pegasi B. These are the questions they might ask, 51 Pegasi B. For this, they have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Nobel Prize in Chemistry went for these three people, John B. Goodenough, Stanley Wittingman and Akira Yoshino for the development of lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries, we all know it's fairly common in car batteries and various daily appliances. The Nobel Prize in Economics went to Abhijit Banerjee, Esther Duflo and Michael Kramer. This is one of the favorite questions because he is an Indian Abhijit Banerjee. He is born out of Mumbai but his domicile state is West Bengal. He's, he studied in JNU then he went on to study in Harvard. In the, right now he is a professor at MIT. They received the Nobel Prize for their experimental approach to alleviating global poverty. So what that is, is they focused on relatively small and specific problems that contributed to poverty and identified the best solutions for them. So they received the uh, Nobel Prize for it. You got to remember this. This is pretty important. The Nobel Prize for Peace went to Abai Ahmad Ali. He is the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. He is Ethiopian PM. If you don't know, Ethiopia and Eritrea both are neighboring countries. They are in South Africa. They are in South Africa, and they have been in war since 1998 to 2018. So the Ethiopian PM he played a major role in ending this war. So he brought peace. So for his efforts, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Prize in Literature went to Peter Handke for an influential work that with linguistic ingenuity has explored the periphery and specificity of human experience. So one of his favorite books or amazing books best selling books you can say is a sorrow beyond dreams the nobel prize in physiology and medicine went to william j kaylin sir peter j ratcliffe and greg j samenza for their discoveries of how cells sense and adapt to oxygen availability so you got to remember all this try to make abbreviations small abbreviations like say aaa it will help you remember or say wpg or ph try to remember the, these are favorite questions most often you can expect it coming to the booker awards so Man Booker is one of the prestigious awards for literature. It is given to original novels that is written in English and published in UK and Ireland. So it is an award based out of UK. Every year they shortlist certain number of books and finally one or two of them are awarded. This year 13 books are shortlisted. Out of them these are the final 6 nominated. Out of this there are 2 books which finally won the Man Booker Prize. One was by The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. The other one was Girl, Women, Other by Bernadine Everisto. So this book Girl, Women, Other, it follows the lives of 12 different people in the United States across several decades. So it is a very telling story and vivid imagination. So it won the Man Booker Prize this year. Also one fact to remember is there are two Indians who won the Man Booker Prize. One is Salman Rushdie for his book The Midnight's Children and one more is Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy won the Booker Award for her book God of Small Things. You can remember this too. Coming to Pulitzer Awards. Pulitzer is awarded for 21 different categories. It is an American based uh, uh, award you can say. It is based out of New York City. It is awarded for outstanding public service and uh, achievement in American journalism, letters and music. So this year fiction prize went to Richard Powers. The Avan story is related to environment. How important it is to preserve our environment. How it is important that we stop deforestation. It is the life of 9 Americans. How they are connected. Their life is connected to trees. An excellent book. So the fiction prize went to Richard Powers, drama prize went to Jackie Sibbies, 
Derby. Poetry Prize went to Horace Gander. Music Prize went to Ellen Reed. Again, Ellen Reed, she is an opera artist for her opera composition. An original composition of opera by Ellen Reed that is called as Prism. For this, she was awarded the Pulitzer Award this year. The History Award. History Award went to David W. Blight. This is pretty important. You can remember this. Frederick Douglass. Who is Frederick Douglass? He was an American social reformer, abolitionist. He came out of slavery and he started the abolitionist movement. So, David W. Blight was awarded the History Prize of Pulitzer Award for this. Photography Prize went to Lorenzo Tagnoli. Coming to major tennis awards, there are four important Grand Slams which happens every year. One is the Australian Open, another one is French Open which is famously called as Roland Garros. It is a place in Paris, France. The third one is US Open and the fourth one is Wimbledon, Wimbledon which is in London. Remember who won all these competitions? It is one of the favorite questions of examiners. So there are some similarities. Try to connect the dots in your head. Novak Djokovic won both uh, Australian Open as well as the Wimbledon. While Rafael Nadal won both Roland Garros as well as the US Open. So you can remember that. Even Simona Halep, she won the Roland Garros French Open as well as the English Open Wimbledon. And lastly, Mayomi Osaka. She is from Japan. Try to remember the countries as well. She won the women's singles in Australian Open. And Bianca Andrescu from Canada. She won the US Open. Also, there are some important questions like who, who won the most Grand Slam? Most Grand Slam is won by Federer. He has 20 number. While Serena Williams has 23 in women. And in Indians, Sumit Nagal is a 22 years old. He is a young upcoming uh, tennis player. Uh, he won the junior Grand Slam title as well. He played recently against uh, Federer. So, someone to uh, remember. And in Asian Games, Rohan Bopanna and Divit Sharan. These, they won the gold medal. Moving forward, major football, <coughs> major football awards. This is dominated by Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. This year, best FIFA award was won by Lionel Messi. He is from Barcelona and Argentina country. Best, man, best goalkeeper went to Brazilian Alisson. He belongs to Liverpool. And best FIFA's men coach went, went to Georgian Klopp. Both Georgian Klopp and Pep Guardiola, they have amazing stories. One of the finest coaches. Georgian Klopp is currently the leading Liverpool. Coming to FIFA Puskas Award. Puskas Award is given to the best goal, most appealing, most enticing goal. This was won by Daniel Zori. FIFA Fair Play Award was awarded to two teams. One is Marcelo Bielsa and the other one is Leeds United. The Ballon d'Or Award was given to Lionel Messi this year. And it is one of the top awards in football. And coming to FIFA World Cup. FIFA World Cup was held in Russia uh, and the winner was France. France played against Croatia and they won by 4-2 this year. It was one of the amazing matches. One popular aspect about football is there are various leagues. One is the European League. European League, last European League was won by Chelsea. The Spanish League was won by Barcelona. Italian League was won by Juventus. German League was won by Bayern Munich. It may seem a lot, but if you are a football enthusiast, these are all very pretty common names, pretty common tips. And lastly, about the FIFA 5th Pro Men's World event, this is not important. But just for fun's sake, if you are interested, you can just go through this. And also, the fee in the World Cup, the Golden Boot Award was again given to Lionel Messi. And Golden Glove Award was given to Thibaut Courtois. He is he's a Belgian football player. And we all know Messi is Argentinian football player. Moving forward. Coming to major cricket awards, if there is a question on cricket, you shouldn't miss it. Because cricket is Indian's forte. So, last year, the cricket was dominated by Virat Kohli. So, this is an award given for overall contribution in 2018. So, overall, based on overall contribution in 2018, the awards are given. The best cricketer of the year, test player of the year, ODI player of the year, all of them was Virat Kohli. Emerging player of the year is Rishabh Pant, most likely the next uh, wicket keeper of India. Women's cricketer of the year is Prithi Mandana. And you should also remember, the captain of women's cricket team is Mithali Raj. Women's ODI Cricketer of the Year was also Smriti Mandana. And coming to major tournaments. Major tournament we saw this year was the ICC World Cup. It was held in England. And the winner was England. They won against New Zealand. And uh, we all know that uh, India lost against New Zealand in the semi-finals. And then uh, the next World Cup location is in India. Also the Asia Cup winner was India. Last year India won the Asia Cup. And the Ashes was drawn. Ashes was held this year between Australia and England. This was drawn and lately after the World Cup, India played against uh, uh, South uh, West Indies, then they played against South Africa, then they played against Bangladesh. They whitewashed West Indies in everything, they whitewashed South Africa. They lost one T20 against Bangladesh, apart from that they again won all the other matches. 
coming to records there are plenty of records set by indians and others these are some highlights muthaya muralidharan has the highest number of wickets sachin tendulkar has the highest number of uh, runs 34000 runs most double hundreds is by rohit sharma he is the first one to get two double hundreds then you have most wickets by anil kumble only player to achieve 4000 test runs as well as 400 test wickets so this is kapil dev and fastest century is by virat kohli he did it in some 52 odd uh, balls and coming to ipl ipl is one of our favorites last year it was won by mumbai indians this is the fourth time mumbai indian is winning so they have won it most number of times chennai has won it three times ipl orange cap was given to david warner for uh, from sunrisers hyderabad the purple cap went to csk's imran tahir and emerging player was shabman gill and the fair play award went to sunrisers hyderabad so moving forward when you questions when it is held it is one of the type of questions that is asked in gk section so we already saw that uh, the world cup is going to be held in india and it will be in 2023 we have the summer olympics that is coming up next year it is going to be held in japan tokyo we have summer olympics of 2024 that is four years after uh, in 2024 that will be held in paris france the asian games in 2022 is in china the winter olympics is also in china winter olympics is held between the two olympics that is going to be held in beijing china the fifa world cup fifa world cup last year in 2018 it was hosted by russia now it will be hosted by qatar and the commonwealth games will be hosted by england in 2022 the icc men t20 world cup so again t20 world cup and uh, cricket world cup alternate every two years so this will be held in australia lastly the fifa women world cup was held in france don't get confused here the men's fifa world cup was held in russia and the next version will be it will be held in qatar the women's fifa world cup was held in france before we look at the key organs of united nations we all know what united nations is it is like the mother of all the countries it has the administrative power of all the countries controlling and bringing everyone together so what uh, salient features it was started in 1945 it has 193 member states or member countries you can say its major purpose is peace and security climate change sustainable development many other roles we'll discuss it in detail in the upcoming slides un also provides a forum to its members to express views in general assembly the security council say india feels there is a security risk from a neighbor or from some certain country then in these forums india goes and expresses its thought that this country we have the security threat other bodies by enabling di uh, dialogue between its members and by hosting negotiations the un's chief administrative officer is the secretary general right now the secretary general is antonio gutierrez he is a uh, united states citizen and uh, he has been serving since 2017 january 1 so this is the uh, secretary general is the head of united nations he is called as chief administrative officer that is antonio gutierrez moving forward united nations main organs there are six main organs one is the general assembly the security council the economics and social council the trusteeship council the international court of justice or the icj and lastly the un secretariat all were established in the 1945 when the united nations itself was uh, constituted the united nations family however is much larger encompassing 15 agencies and several programs and bodies so there are several programs these are the six main organs you can call them among the six one of them has been retired the one that is retired is the trusteeship council a sixth principal organ trusteeship council suspended operations on 1st november 1984 upon the independence of palau the last remaining un trusteeship uh, territory so you can say there are five important organs currently there are multiple agencies but five are uh, very important you can say talking about the various factions of the united nations us has always been the driver of world politics for some time so majority of the headquarters is in new york you can say new york five of them are in new york the international court of justice called as icj icj the headquarters is in the hague netherlands and try to remember this icj is in hague netherlands all the others the general assembly security council the ecosoc economic and social council ecosoc and the secretariat all are headquartered in new york so what are their functions general assembly is policy making it is a representative organ of the united nations security council it deals with security peace and security maintenance of peace international peace and security india has lately applied for permanent membership in the security council and ecosoc recommendations of on economic social and environmental issue so ecosoc deals with economy 
International Court of Justice. The ICJ settles and advises international legal disputes. So you can know the you may know the case of Kulbushan Jadav. It is an international dispute between India and Pakistan. So ICJ rules over it. Secretariat is the body for the secretary that is uh, secretary general body for the secretary general and tens of thousands of international UN staff members. Try to remember the number of members in each factions. General Assembly that is uh, General Assembly everyone will be a member. The total number of members are 193 members. Security Council not all are members only 5 is permanent 10 are not permanent. India has applied for becoming a permanent for the permanent status. 54 members in ECOSOC and 7 members this has been currently retired. Coming to subsidiaries, the General Assembly are further divided into boards, commissions, committees. Uh, so it is a further classification. One of the subsidiary of General Assembly is UNICEF, UNDP. All of them have, have their own objectives and functionalities. So the ECOSOC is committee, committee for developing development policy. A subsidiary of Secretariat is United Nations Statistical Commission. So it, you can say it is a census board for the world sort of. And coming to heads, try to remember the names. If it is uh, too difficult, then you can move ahead. But this is very important. Secretary General uh, is uh, uh, Antonio Gutierrez. And lastly, abbreviations. This is called as ECOSOC. We discussed that. This is called International Code of Justice. is called as ICJ. General Assembly has multiple names. It is also called as UNGA. This is how it appears popularly in news. It is called as General Assembly GA. Or sometimes it is also referred as AG. And Secretariat is also referred to as World Court. Coming to global bodies, there are several global bodies, try to go through each one of them. I will try to cover the important ones. Current, contemporarily, the important one is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, that is OPEC. Right now, Trump has imposed a lot of sanctions on Iran, so the oil prices are haywire, it is very volatile. So at this time, OPEC is pretty important. President is uh, Mohammed Barkino. The headquarters is, is based out of Vienna, Australia and the description of it is their main objective is to coordinate and unify the petroleum policies of its member countries. International Monetary Fund. International Monetary Fund the main purpose is to foster global monetary compensation or to promote international monetary cooperation between countries to facilitate the expansion and balanced growth of international trade. So all these are its objectives. Right now the president of uh, IMF is Kristalina Georgieva and the headquarters is based out of Washington DC. World Bank. World Bank we all know we have uh, personal loans, we have small banks for personal loans, we have larger banks, corporate banks for uh, loans for companies. Similarly we have loans, countries take loans from World Bank. The main purpose is for uh, alleviating poverty or to give developmental aid. When, uh, cat when a catastrophe strikes, then World Bank will come to the rescue, you can say. President is David Malpass. It is also based out of Washington DC. Provides loans and grants to the governments of poorer countries. Amnesty International and then we have International Court of Justice. We just saw ICJ, the head is Abdul Kavi Ahmad Yusuf. We saw it in the case of uh, uh, Kulbushan Jadav between India and Pakistan. It settles dispute across uh, international boundaries. It is based out of Hague, Netherlands. This is only one of the factions, uh, important factions of uh, UN that is based not in US. It is based in Hague, Netherlands. NATO, NATO is an international organization. It mostly comprises of uh, European countries. All the developed and uh, developing countries of Europe. You also have US, Canada and a few other countries. The main purpose is security cooperation. To guarantee the freedom and security of its members through political and military means. It is headquartered in Belgium, Brussels. Brazil. ASEAN is Association of Southeast Asian Nations that is India is not part of ASEAN. The countries that is east of uh, India that is countries like uh, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Brunei, Cambodia, Laos all these come under ASEAN. So the purpose is to accelerate economic growth, social progress and cultural development. So these all these Asian countries are very close to India they are towards the east of India. So again it is important that we know it. It is based out of Jakarta. The capital of Indonesia is Jakarta. It is based out in Indonesia. World Trade Organization. World Trade Organization is headed by Roberto Azevedo. Roberto Azevedo. And the headquarters is Geneva. Geneva is in Switzerland. And the purpose of World Trade Organization is to promote trade. Promote trade or globalization to ensure that trade flows as smoothly, predictably and freely as possible. So to promote globalization, that is the purpose of World Trade Organization. The president is Roberto Azevedo. Coming to BRICS, BRICS stands for five nations. One is Brazil, one is India, we have China and then we have South Africa. 
all of them are developing countries and uh, the headquarters is based out of shanghai china this is for assisting development countries this is for assisting developing countries and lastly sarc sarc stands for south asian association for regional cooperation the member countries are say afghanistan is there you have bangladesh we have uh, bhutan we have india we have maldives we have nepal we have uh, pakistan we have sri lanka so all these are members of sarc the president of sarc is amjad hussein b sain so this is also important sarc is very relevant to india so the president of uh, sarc is amjad hussein b sain it is based out of kathmandu nepal the headquarters is in kathmandu nepal the purpose is to quicken the economic growth social progress and cultural development just like the europeans have nato or the east countries the uh, countries east of india have asean similarly sarc is the countries of india surrounding neighbors surrounding india so the uh, president is amjad hussein b sain and the purpose is to accelerate growth social progress and cultural development and also one more important thing to remember is rcep so what is rcep rcep is regional comprehensive economic partnership so to give you a brief rcep is a proposed mega free trade agreement mega free trade agreement between 16 countries the among the 16 there are 10 asian countries we already saw laos myanmar we have uh, Cambodia all those countries along with India China Australia New Zealand uh, Japan and South Korea so all these 16 countries came together for a free trade agreement so it is a move towards globalization all the products and services are much cheaper the imported products are cheaper but this would have affected indian farmers and many other local manufacturers so india had these outstanding issues with the rcep that indian farmers will be hit the poorer will become more poor so india exited the rcep deal So this is a important information to remember. There is still a lot of ground to cover when it comes to GK, but uh, as and when, how much ever we are able to complete, we are uploading it. So we'll upload some more part of it tomorrow. So keep tuned, guys. Good luck.